Now you've probably seen freeze frames used in documentaries and films all the time and thought it was very useful and cool, but perhaps wondered how you could actually achieve the effect yourself. Now there are a couple of ways to make a freeze frame in DaVinci Resolve, but it can be a little confusing. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a couple of ways that you can make a freeze frame that perhaps aren't the most flexible, and I'm gonna show you the way that I like to create a dynamic freeze frame in DaVinci Resolve 18. So stay tuned, but let's get started. Thank you very much guys for joining me for this very quick tutorial on creating a freeze frame the right way in DaVinci Resolve. My name is Alex and I'm a certified DaVinci Resolve trainer. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I make tutorials about video production, but specifically DaVinci Resolve. So if that sounds up your street, then please take a moment to subscribe to the channel as it really helps me to produce more and more videos for you to enjoy. Okay, let's jump over to DaVinci Resolve. All right, here we are in DaVinci Resolve 18. We've got a timeline loaded up in the edit page. And it's just a short documentary about a girl who's a fantastic surfer. And this particular clip here is the one that I want to look at. It sweeps in, the boom of the windsurf pulls out the way and reveals our subject as she's surfing around the corner. And this is absolutely brilliant. It's a nice spot for us to put a freeze frame in, put some titles on the screen, maybe some musical cues or some narration, whatever it is, and then have it play out. So it's gonna be quite a dynamic freeze frame in if there was such a thing, because essentially we're gonna have it pause for a small moment of time and then carry on. And of course, if we can allow ourselves some flexibility to adjust very easily the length of that freeze frame, all the better. So there are a couple of ways into which resolve that we can do a freeze frame. Some of them give you different results, and I'm gonna show you through some of the ones that we don't necessarily want in this case. All right, so that's why I was talking at the beginning about them being the wrong way of doing a freeze frame. This way I think is a lot better and actually gives you a lot more flexibility. So let me show you the other ways first. So firstly, I want to put the freeze frame in, and I want to put it in at around a minute and four seconds. So I'm gonna put it in, let's say, exactly a minute and four seconds. There we are. And I'm just gonna select the clip, and I'm gonna come up to the clip menu which is just here, and I'm gonna come down to where it says freeze frame, because you'd have thought that's a good place to start, right? Freeze frame, command shortcut is the shift R. So if we use the freeze frame, and there we are, we've created ourselves a freeze frame, congratulations. However, as you can see, it's not quite what we were expecting. It's essentially created a freeze frame at the point at which the playhead was parked and used that as a reference, and then applied it to the whole clip duration in the timeline, which isn't what we want, right? So as you can see, it's just a very undynamic keyframe in this case. Now, of course, it might be something that you're looking to achieve, in which case, congratulations, you now know how to do that. But we'll get it back up a step and see if we can find a better way of doing it. So let's have another look. Let's move it forward and park ourselves up at the playhead that we want again, which is right there. And I'm just gonna come up and go to the clip menu again, and I'm gonna come down to change clip speed, because essentially that's what we're trying to do, right? So that is the keyboard shortcut R, so we're gonna press that and we get a little dialog pops up, change clip speed. And you can see that there's an option here for freeze frame, which is perfect, that's exactly what we're trying to achieve. So let's hit freeze frame and hit change. And cool, we've got another freeze frame created, but again, it's not quite what we wanted, but we are getting closer. Because in this instance, look, it sweeps in nicely, freezes where we wanted it, but unfortunately now it's applied that freeze frame from the point at which the playhead was parked all the way forward for the remainder of the clip duration in the timeline. Again, not quite what we wanted, but another way that you can create a freeze frame and definitely certainly a useful technique to be able to do. Now you can actually tweak this if you wanted to. For example, you could cut the clip, you could then unfreeze it, you could do a lot here. And incidentally, this is exactly the same. If I just back that up a step and come back to where we wanted to park our playhead again, knock it forward to the right place, come up to the inspector, and then in the inspector, if you come down to where it says speed change, with the clip selected of course, and hit speed change, you can now see that we've got the same controls that we had just a moment ago in the change clip speed dialog box, and they work in almost exactly the same way. So we, at the moment we've got direction playing forward. If we wanted to put a freeze frame in, we can press this little icon here, click, and as you can see, we've got the same result and it freezes forward from that point. Now if we wanted to, what you could do is simply click this section of the clip again, and now put another freeze frame in, by pressing the freeze frame, but then in this instance, playing it forward like so, and now what we'll have actually have done is created a dynamic freeze frame. So as you can see, that actually works quite nicely because it freezes and then plays forward again. So it is kind of what we wanted. Apart from, as you could see, it took me a few steps to get there, and now it's a little bit unwieldy because we've got these three separate chunks here of our clip, and they're not particularly easy to kind of put back together. It's gonna to get a bit messy. So let me back up to the point where we have no freeze frame, and I've zoomed in a little bit just to make us able to see this a little bit better. So there we are at a minute four, and there's our freeze frame. I'm just gonna zoom out just a touch. There we go. 
Okay, so how can we achieve this fantastic freeze frame that's very dynamic and allows us more flexibility after the fact? Well, I'm gonna click the clip and then I'm gonna come up to the clip menu and I'm gonna come down to Retime Controls and that is Command R. And this is also available when you right click, come up to Retime Controls, as is the change clip speed, incidentally. So I'm gonna to come to the Retime Controls and open them up. You've probably seen these before in a previous video. If you haven't, I'll link one up in the top corner where we talk about speed changes, ramping speed, things like that. In this instance, we're looking at that freeze frame. So in this instance, we're on the right frame. This is where we want to create the freeze frame. So what we do is we come down to this little chap just down here, where you can see we've got uh, options here for our speed point. And at the moment, it's obviously at 100%. We want it to be a freeze frame. So now we're going to hit freeze frame. And what you'll notice is it's actually inserted a freeze frame section for us. As you can see, that's denoted by these little red lines that are essentially showing us that the clip is not moving anyway. It's not going forward or backwards. And you can see here, this is what it looks like at 100 speed moving in the right direction. And again, 100 speed moving in the right direction. So this now is going to create us exactly what we want. It's going to sweep in. It's going to pause. And it's going to move off again. And I think the default is two seconds. So we've got a little two second freeze frame there. Now, the good thing is if we want to adjust the length of that freeze frame, let's say we want five seconds, you know, we could easily move that out by just simply grabbing this top puck and then just dragging it out until we're happy. So let's say move it out to here. Cool. And now we've got a longer freeze in the middle. Very nice. At this point, I'm just going to butt in quickly to make sure you're still paying attention and you're following along okay. Let me know if you are by smashing the like button and while we're on a break, we were on a break! Consider subscribing to the channel. Remember that I'll be doing the giveaway that I've been talking about very soon. There's still time to enter that and the details about the live giveaway draw will be posted here on the channel and also on Instagram. So make sure you're following me there too so you don't miss out on any important information. Right, let's get back to the video. One of the things you'll notice though, is that I've made a small error when I've done this. If I just back up a second, we had a whole extra clip here to the right. And obviously as I move this park, it's absolutely overwritten that clip. And that's not really what we want because now we're gonna to have to fix this clip. It's gonna be more work for us, more time. We don't want that in this instance. So let's back up to where it was a second ago. And the reason this is overwritten is because we're in the selection mode, the edit selection mode, which is this one just here, as you can see, I have it created and it's this keyboard shortcut A, it's the default mode. What we want to do is when we're adjusting this freeze frame, we want to do it in the trim edit mode, okay? Which is the T on the keyboard, select that. And now when I adjust this puck, you can notice that all of my clips to the right ripple. So they make room for this new inserted section of freeze frame, which is exactly what we want, because now we're not gonna to have to work with lots of extra effort to close down any gaps on the timeline or in, get indeed fix any clips that we've overwritten. So perfect, we have now got a great situation to be working in, so this is lovely. And the last thing I want to show you is that this freeze frame is great, it does exactly what we want, it comes in, it stops, perfectly where we want it to. We can adjust that nice and flexibly at any point we want, and then we can let it play out just like we're supposed to. But of course, it's quite an abrupt stop. It's quite harsh. It's just simply stop and then start. What if you want to have that be a bit more gradual and a bit more dynamic still in terms of it, the way it looks? So we can do that as well. So what we need to do in this instance, we need to open up the curves so that we can have a look at the curves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to right click on my clip and come up to Retime Curve and open that up. Now, what you'll see is a few curves here to begin with. You've got Retime Speed, which is the one we're after, but then you'll also be able to see the Retime Frame. Now, just to get rid of that, and if you don't see Retime Speed, click this little arrow in the top left and come down and turn off the Retime Frame and leave the Retime Speed turned on, which is what we want. And now we're only looking at the one. It makes it a little bit less complicated. So you can see that that mirrors it perfectly. As we get to the hard stop, it becomes a hard stop, just like that. We want to soften this off. So to do that, we simply select the point just here. And instead of it being this linear node point, we want to make it a Bezier point. So we're gonna do that to both of those. And now you can see there's a gentle gradient on both of those. And again, we can actually adjust the handles to make it a longer, slower gradient if we want to, or indeed we can shorten it by dragging to the left, but we're gonna drag out to the right, make it a nice slow gradient there. So it's gonna slow right up. And this is how this looks. And again, you can see it slowing down and then finally stopping. Now, of course, this footage was actually shot at a high frame rate and then interpolated down to 23.976, but 
you might be working with footage that's maybe not a high frame rate. And even in this instance, actually, you look at it and it's a little bit jagged. It's a little bit jerky as it slows down to stop. That's, you know, just the by nature of the fact that we're slowing down a clip to zero, but we can make this slightly better. So to do that, let's have a look at how we do it. So by default, if we look at the project settings, we actually have in the master settings an option here to look at our frame interpolation. Now, the retiming process is set to nearest and the motion estimation mode is set to standard faster, which is the default and that's absolutely fine for most cases. And I'm not gonna change the project settings at this stage because I don't want it to have an impact on the other clips in my timeline necessarily. The cool thing is that we can come to our inspector up in the top right corner, scroll all the way down until you see retime and scaling, open that up, and once you've got that open, you can see retime process, motion estimation, which were the same things we were just looking at in the project settings. And of course, at the moment, it's set to project settings. So what we're gonna set it to is optical flow, and then we're gonna set it from project settings to enhance better. Now that is, if you're on the free version of DaVinci Resolve, you won't have the option to go to speed warp. That is a studio only option. Uh, I would like to show you speed warp because it does do a fantastic job, but if you don't have it, enhance better will be the next best thing. I'm gonna to go to speed warp in this instance. What you'll notice is that I already have my playback menu, render cache turned to smart. So the instant I applied speed warp, it's a very computer intensive state. So you notice that it's gone from red uh, and where it needs to be cached to memory and it's now turning blue as my computer caches it. I've got a fairly fast setup here, but despite that, it's gonna be a, a clip that's gonna to struggle to play back quickly because warp uh, speed warp is very computer intensive. But now the desired result, once we've got that going all blue, is a lot nicer and a lot cleaner and it looks a little bit more sort of um, almost magical and kind of otherworldly. Yes, there are a few small imaging artifacts to it, but it does look a whole lot better and it's better than it being all jagged. It just slows right down, bang. And as you can see, it then starts to slowly ramp back up and the water sort of almost moves by itself before she starts moving. It looks really cool. What a great effect. And that's basically using speed warp and the retiming process to make that whole thing look a little bit better. Now, what we can do here from this point is we can close down our retime curve. We can close down our retime controls and we now have our clip in the timeline that looks really cool and it's working really nicely. I can now go back to my standard selection mode if I want to. And again, this is a scenario where if you've got that cached into the project nicely and you're happy with that clip, maybe you know it's exactly where you want it and you don't want to change it at this point, to save you from having to recache every time, what you can actually do is right click and then render in place. And then simply choose your render options to render this in place. A good one for this clip in this instance, because I'm on a Mac, would be QuickTime ProRes 422. You can obviously choose other flavors if you'd like, but even if the HQ option is an option, you can choose that and then simply render that out and you'll get a baked in rendered clip into your timeline that won't need to be recached. It will just work much, much better with your computer. So there you go. Creating a freeze frame in DaVinci Resolve is relatively straightforward, but it does help to know which option you should use. Otherwise you'll get the wrong result or it will take you way longer than necessary. I really hope that it helped you. And if it did, please take a moment and press your finger onto the thumbs up button to like this video and let others know that it was worth a watch. It's also a great time to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos just like this one, as actually a lot of people that watch the videos aren't subscribed already. Remember, also turn on those notifications for my videos, meaning that you'll be the first one to know when new videos are available and you'll never miss another one. On that note, my friends, I will leave you to your editing and I hope to see you in another video very soon. If you fancy watching another one of those videos right now though, I've got a few suggestions popping up in just a second, but until next time, bye for now.